AWS Architecture Series. In this series, we will cover various tips and strategies for building a well-architected framework. Today, we are going to talk about disaster recovery strategies. Hey, welcome to another episode of AWS Cloud Bytes. I'm your host, Bhavesh Kumar. I'm a certified AWS Solutions Architect professional and a DevOps engineer professional. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe and click the notification bell icon. What is disaster recovery? The first thing that we hear uh, when you talk about resiliency in the cloud, um, one of the factors comes in is about disaster recovery. So disaster recovery is a process of preparing for and recovering from an event, basically. Your workload must be able to perform its intended function correctly and consistently. To achieve this, you must architect for resiliency. Now, resiliency is the ability to you know, recover from infrastructure or uh, service disruptions, dynamically acquiring compute resources or meet the demand or mitigate any kind of disruptions that is happening. Disaster recovery can be compared to availability, uh, which is another important component of the resiliency strategy. Disaster recovery measures the objectives for a given one-time events. Uh, availability is like over a period of time. So things that come under disaster recovery, you can say natural disasters such as earthquakes, floods, a technical failure such as power failure, network connectivity, any human error or any kind of um, undesired situation such as war or something happening to the data center or something happening to the world in that particular reason. What are the objectives of disaster recovery? So when we talk about disaster recovery, there is a business impact um, when something happens like that. So we need to have um, quantitative um, business impact analysis uh, that, that has happened because of some kind of uh, disruption to the business. We need to identify the internal as well as external customers and impact that is happening because of this disruption. Now, there are two things uh, mentioned here. One is uh, RPO and the other one is RTO on the screen. So I've just highlighted them. Um, RPO is basically to the point where you're going to say, okay, I should be able to recover up to this point of um, data before the failure. And then the RTO is what time you, you allow your business to be down since the disaster happened. So looking at this picture, you can just see there is a data loss that is going to happen between this point and this point uh, when the disaster happens. So any data that was fed into the system will be lost, while downtime is telling that from this particular point, you were available, you were working, and suddenly there is a disaster happening. So from this point to this point, there won't be any availability of the system. System will be down. So this is your downtime. We'll discuss more about RTO and RPO in next slides. Um, so I'm not going in for the details. Let's move on. Before we jump in to the details of um, different disaster recovery strategies, we should be looking at a couple of things like multi-AZ versus multi-region strategy. Uh, as you already know, each region has at least two AZs and more than two AZs are possible. There are certain regions where I've seen like six or seven AGs. Now, depending upon whether you want a regional redundancy or you want to have a disaster um, recovery strategy that is just over multiple AZs, um, for events such as power failure, uh, flooding, or any regional disaster, you can go with a multi-AZ strategy. But if you want to have a disaster recovery plan where one region impact should not be sh shutting your business down, and you want to have multi-region strategy so that East Coast impact, so suppose there is an impact on U.S. East Coast, your business should be running uh, from a disaster recovery um, point of view and you have another region where your appliances are running in maybe um, a west coast or maybe in europe 
so a multi-region strategy may be useful for you so it's like different data center all together in different regions so looking at this slide um, there are four different disaster recovery strategies that are available in AWS uh, from left to right the left one um, the leftmost one which is backup and restore is a cold strategy um, and it's the cheapest one that is available and when you move towards the right side of the screen uh, from backup, backup and restore to multi-site or active active it's get real time but it is expensive so Abidna should think about the impact um, we should have a disaster recovery plan in place saying this much data we can afford to lose or we don't want to lose even a single record in that case you might have to go towards the right side of the screen or apply this kind of strategy uh, where active active is there or there is a warm standby so we'll talk about each and every strategy over here um, these strategies these three strategies basically backup and restore um, pilot light warm standby they are called active passive so the the working version or your production side is active and then your disaster recovery is passive where whereas on the multi side your you have active active your production as well as your dr is all active a um, few points to note about uh, the R rpo and rto so you have um Obviously, if you take a backup and restore, there will be a data loss between backup and disaster happening. So this is going to be lower in cost, uh, but it will take more time to, um, this RTO will be higher, while RPO, um, there will be another like loss of data um, because of, um, if you have defined an RPO and it is not able to, um, if this strategy doesn't suit your RPO or the point objective, then you have to move towards some some other strategy like pirate light or warm standby or even active active. So this might take uh, hours to restore. The next one, pilot light, is there's a live data, uh, which means basically it is available and active as well as uh, there is a real time um, replication happening. But your services are not there in both the regions. Um, Maybe there is some downtime just to get the services up and running. It will be higher in the cost. So if you see the cost is low and this is a little higher in the cost, maybe more depending upon your services. But it is going to be much faster as compared to backup and restore. Warm standby is again, um, it is going to be pretty fast um, because there is always a, a smaller set of your business uh, applications running in a disaster um, region, um, the DR region that you have defined. And then anything that is business critical will be ran. Um, you just need to do scaling as per production level because uh, it might not be running all the services in production scale. And then this is going to cost a little bit higher. Um, it's expensive. Now, moving to active active, this is the most expensive one. And if you see, this is towards the red side of the spectrum. There won't be any uh, downtime because um, it's always running both the original region, your production region, as well as your disaster recovery uh, site is both, both of them are active. Uh, so if this is down, then this is still running. Uh, near zero data loss. Uh, so it's got replicating in real time. And then if it is uh, really mission critical services, um, you might have to go this route. And this is the most expensive one. Let's move on. Okay, let's look at the active passive and active active strategies. Um, so in the active passive, you see there is a, there is a production. This is your production system and your users are connected to production system. And then there is a standby system. Uh, and this is, this is basically a depiction of normal operation. In case the production is down, now there will be a trigger to flip the connectivity of these users to the disaster recovery um, region. 
and then there will be a recovery process that is going to happen so after the disaster event you have to scale it up um, run other services and then this will be live live uh, region well in active active if you see the differences like the user are, is available uh, is connected to both both the regions and both the regions are working in production um, scale. So even if one region is gone, you are still up and running. There might be some performance impact, but if you have a scaling available over here, you might even consume that, or you might even shield your users from that production um, performance impact. Okay, so let's look at uh, backup and restore. So if you see there is a region one and then there is a region two. Now this is your uh, DR region. Um, left side is your production region. So what is happening is in this case, if you see EBS snapshots are taken and stored in S3 bucket. EFS is there and then there is a backup. And similarly RDS, there is a snapshot coming to S3 bucket. Now. Everything is done locally. So this is uh, in the same region. We are taking the snapshots and storing them to S3 bucket or taking a AWS backup. Now, there might be more more regions. Or, so if it is a single region, um, if you have multiple availability, availability zone um, strategy, then you can restore using, if you see this, uh, they're just restoring within a different AZ, depending upon if you are saying, if this AZ goes down, just spin a new thing in this AZ. The region, so if the whole region, your strategy is like multi-region, they would like to have a cross-region backup going to a different region uh, where you can make a copy uh, of all the data set that you have here and copied in these S3 buckets or AWS backup, and then a restore can happen. So this is your backup and restore. This is not live data. Uh, anytime there is a backup, you can make a cross region um, copy. And then whenever disaster happens, you can do a restore. You can have uh, services down here. No services are running. You can spin new services, compute instances, and then can start working on it. So that's backup and restore so the next version is uh, we call it pilot light second strategy now in pilot light as we already mentioned there's the same picture on the left side it is all production on the right side it is uh, your disaster recovery region now there is a route 53 and this is your active route so all the production uh, requests are coming through this and there is a elb some servers are running, there is auto scaling here. And then there is a Aurora a database over here, as well as there is a replica happening in same region in two ACs. Um, in the meantime, um, you are also having a cross region replication. Uh, you have Aurora replica in a disaster recovery region. So if you see there is no compute here, there's only elastic load balancer that is running. There's no compute instance. There's an auto scaling here. Um, we don't have any servers running. And then there is a, a replica that is doing a asynchronous uh, replication of your Aurora database. As soon as this database goes down in a pilot light, what you can do is a uh, route 53 can automatically trigger based on the health check, can remove this route and start sending traffic to the other route. Now, when you start getting traffic, you can have all these compute instances um, created uh, using auto scaling groups and then can start serving your your clients using this particular database. Um, this will have maybe minutes, maybe 10 minutes or 20 minutes, depending upon uh, how many services and other things that you have to run to production scale, uh, how much time they take. But this is like um, one of the cheapest options backup and restore is the cheapest one and this is a little bit expensive but at least you have data replication here uh, which is not real time uh, but asynchronous okay let's move to the other one okay so the next strategy is warm standby uh, this is very similar to the pilot light um, strategy 
the only difference is that if you see you have a minimal service instance running so we have two AZs um, in the disaster recovery uh, region but we are not scaling we are having a minimum compute available in the pilot light the computes are not there um, but in this case we are having like two compute instances running in one AZ only so that's bare minimum just to allow this to qu quickly recover from any kind of disaster as soon as there is a disaster um, route 53 based on the health check can flip to the DR region and then um, they can start um, serving the clients it doesn't have to wait for it um, like all these services to spin there might be a performance uh, issue because it might take five to ten minutes depending upon how your scaling policy is uh, to scale these uh, instances just to give a production like performance but yeah the performance may go down uh, to start with but at least it is there and it will start serving immediately okay the final strategy over here is uh, multi-site active active uh, so active active as i already said uh, both the routes are active so route 53 can do a weighted or latency based routing or geo based routing depending upon your routing strategy over here so both of them are active and at production scale so if you look at this as well as on the right side these regions they have similar compute capacity there's a dynamo db here there's a dynamo db here and then there is a backup that is happening a dynamo db continuous backup as well as there is a synchronous replication happening between each of them so the user can go this route or this route doesn't matter but this is the most expensive one as it has more services running a replica of each service is running in a different region so let's uh, conclude this discussion uh, we have to look at the cost and the complexity uh, when we think about disaster recovery we also have to look at the data loss that is acceptable and service disruption uh, disruption to the business um, if you look at this basically backup and restore is the lowest in the recovery cost but it might be really high in data loss and disruption of the service if you look at pilot light it might be expensive but maybe a lower side of data loss warm standby can be similar thing um, uh, for data loss and service disruption maybe lesser data loss but it is again expensive than pilot light because it is running more services as compared to pilot light while uh, multi-site is the most expensive but there is uh, because it is near real time there is absolutely there is a possibility of absolutely zero data loss there are chances you may have some data loss but in most of the cases you won't you won't have any such corruption maybe one or one or two data records may have some issue but uh, this is the most expensive one so uh, to conclude we we should be looking at um, disaster events as a potential threat to your uh, business and there should be a proper a disaster recovery plan in place and how will you flip um, in case of any such event what kind of uh, data loss is acceptable data loss what kind of service disruption is acceptable to the business all those questions have to be answered in order to define a proper RTO and RPO for a business this is the end of the show thank you for watching please click subscribe button and press the bell icon for notification on new episodes this is your host Bhavish Kumar signing off Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.